Welcome to Better Health Together and welcome to Misty Nkakwa, excuse me, who's here to have a conversation about, I guess, the importance of um, acceptance and inclusion of the LGBTQI community in primary health care. And you'll note that behind us is our lovely rainbow flag, uh, which is partially about celebrating Pride Month, but also was at our Fair Day store where many people enjoy writing their thoughts and wishes on our flag, which we'll also do shortly. This is on one of our uh, advisory committees, so we thought it was an opportunity to invite you to just have this conversation about what the future might look like, what are we doing in primary care, and what do you think of the important things we need to remember as we go forward. So. I guess I could ask just that first backdrop question with our flag in tow. Why is Pride Month really important to the community? Hmm. Um, well, it is really important to the community. Uh, you may have seen that at the Pride Parade, there was over 100 floats yeah. and so many people. Uh, it, it's, it's an idea that came about through protest. Um, yes. And it's an idea that came about because um, LGBTIQ plus people weren't being treated equally and that was not okay. Yeah. So it's kind of grounded in this, you know, sense of we, we want to be treated like everyone else. Yeah. Um, but also now it's become, um, for us, a bit more of a celebration mm. of our identities and being who we are and mm. being authentic um, because there has been a lot of progress in, you know, yes. the human rights of LGBTI people. Yes. yes. Um, interestingly enough, as a backdrop, one of the important things about, uh, for us is that in the fifth mental health the national plan, LGBTIQ community are, are an important population group given their higher risk than their peers mm. uh, for mental health concerns and suicide. And I'm not sure the rest of the world quite understands why that might be so and mm. how come. But from your perspective, uh, what are the sort of things that are happening now that are helping to improve primary health or access to health that you know about mm. and particularly mental health? Yeah, I mean, just to just to go back to your first comment about you know the poor mental health outcomes, um, I, I kind of like to note that that's not about us being LGBTIQ plus. It's about that historical stigma and discrimination, yeah, and, right. you know, not feeling like we're being treated equally. Yeah. Um, I think particularly in the last year or so in WA, there's been a lot of initiatives um, that have started to pop up around the place, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'm part of the WA LGBTI health strategy right. uh, reference group. Sure, yeah. um, Wafra has got a number yes, of reference groups, sure. as you mentioned. Um, so the government actually seems to be doing a lot of stuff. Um, and we are getting, so I do a lot of work with uh, GRAY, which is yes, GLBTI yeah. rights and aging. Um, we're getting a lot more requests for training and mm. to go and educate staff. Um, so that stuff is all really good, really, really good. Yeah. And so there's lots happening mm -hmm. and of course you might be aware we're undertaking the Rainbow Tick mm -hmm. accreditation which we think is really important both for our staff and also all of our stakeholders. Yeah. But if you could describe what you'd like to see the future in primary care mm -hmm. and its uh, support of people with um, health concerns, the LGBTI community, yeah. what would those what would those ideals be? What would those themes look like? What would you hope for? Mm -hmm. I think you know, broadly, I would say that, you know, we could, as LGBTI people, go into any primary healthcare service and get treated brilliantly. Yeah. So what, what we want is for everyone working in that space, for all practitioners to have a really good understanding of what our needs are and what our requirements are, how we're different, but also how we're the same. So, yeah, that's right. you know, I hear a lot of stories of people um, going to see practitioners and, you know, not having the best experience. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of organisations that have lists of really good practitioners that they will recommend to members. Yeah. Um, we don't want it to be like that. Like, we want to know that it's consistent wherever we go. And I think, in summary, from my perspective, that's about stigma and about discrimination. Mm -hmm. And we want a, a healthcare system that doesn't reinforce stigma or that's indeed right. discrimination. Yep. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Misty. Great conversation. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.